Last year we got some things right, and I think we got some things wrong. So I think the presentation last year was before the Spain September 28th announcement. So uh, as you guys all know, the 2008 uh, markets have been a bit brutal. Let's see here. So global electricity demand. Um, I think that you know increasingly one of the things that we failed to look at in many of the many of the markets that we look at is electricity demand. And so in some markets like Germany, we're actually destroying traditional baseload, right? Today there's so much solar, so much wind, so much fuel cells, so much other things that are going in that we're actually exceeding their, um, their ability to, uh, we're, we're exceeding the, the growth in the market and we're actually taking away market share from traditional sources. Uh, and then I think, you know, this is a slide that uh, Booz Allen put together. But it's basically talking about $9 trillion in investments in the power sector. And you can sort of see where the GDP versus electricity demand per capita is. You know, China is far higher than India, for instance. And so you can start to see the, the trend lines of increasing amounts of energy uh, usage in some of these other countries. I think, you know, part of what we have to try to figure out is how do we get those guys on the left-hand side of the of the graph to actually do big solar programs as opposed to the guys on the right hand side of the graph who have traditionally been our markets. Um, but to the US industry, I, you know, these are all the different demand curves from Photon, Goldman, Broadpoint, Navigant, Morgan Stanley. I think you, hopefully most of you guys have probably seen these things. It's uh, all over the map. I guess in 2010, uh, we're supposed to have cumulative gigawatts of between six and 14. Um, I think they're completely out to lunch, but, um, but that's, that's, what, that's what they're showing. Uh, you know, I think that the biggest problem with the U.S. market is, um, I see Julie's in the audience, and I think that Julie will tell you firsthand later, is that the U.S. market, all the subsidies in the U.S. market have been set as a floor price to the, to the, um, to the industry. We, we, we just, in general, um, the regulators are reading, you know, some of the reports you guys have all seen from Mike Rogel as well as folks from, uh, also have histories back to 2003 where they're saying there's no reason that we have to pay $4 a watt U.S. for modules and therefore we are going to set a price at this. And you see California today is, you know, at the 22 cent PBI level is a, is a level that really isn't moving forward very quickly. Um, and you'll start to see that in other markets. So in places like Colorado, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, all of these markets have um, safety mechanisms around what the rate increase can be from the solar programs. Um, and so to the extent that the demand is a smaller number today, which is true, uh, we can stay underneath those caps. In the future, uh, we're going to have to stay at that same demand unless we get module price reductions such that we can actually reduce the price of the renewable energy credits uh, if we want to actually grow demand. It's, it's a very straightforward process that they've created in, in the U.S. And, and the, you know, the industry as a whole has tended to have better options as to where to sell those, those modules. So they've been able to sell them into Spain and to this, next year probably Italy and other places at higher gross margins, and you're seeing, I think, probably from the floor at the convention today that m many people don't have big plans for U.S. Uh, in first, second quarter of 2009. So the um, only thing I can say is there has to be um, a tremendous amount of, I mean, as you can tell, this, this number, 57%, is nothing, right? I mean, that's because we're starting from a small base, and, it, and this, this number in 08 is nothing. So I think what you'll find is if, the, if you really want, as Edwin had talked about, the U.S. to be the largest market in the world, we've got to sustain triple-digit growth rates for the next three or four years to actually, you know, be a material market. Uh, so what are the drivers? I mean, you know, the drivers is commercial electricity prices have increased about 4.76% per year since 2000. And you can see them by region, right? So, you know, New England's one of the worst in terms of their rate increases. Um, but you've seen a lot of the other guys in, in increasing. And these, this data is changing every day. So, I mean, you know, just last week, the Tennessee Valley Authority increased rates by 20%, and they're primarily hydro, right? And so you've got 
a tremendous amount of um, acceleration, actually, of electricity price increases coming beyond what's in this graph. So today, there's about $80 billion of the U.S. commercial electricity market. Um, and the, the residential will probably be similar, uh, which is about 12% of the energy is sold at above 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, that number will continue to increase as the rates underlying this graph continue to increase. I think that, you know, there's, as you, there's 1,400 plus utilities. There's actually many more, but 1,400 that are of any material size. Um, and over 150 utilities charge 15 cents a kilowatt hour or more. So it's only about 10% of the utilities. Um, and you know, basically what, what's happening is that there's this, what I talked about last year is there's an extraordinary tension between customers and utilities today. Um, a lot of customers are saying, when will it stop? We're continuing to get double digit rate increases over the last three years. Um, and they're looking at solar as the only fuel hedge that they have to switch over to solar. Now, utility companies are saying, wait a second, you know, there's a whole bunch of customers that are leaving us that want to do solar. Maybe we should start getting into this game. So I think you've, you're seeing, um, we've signed about, I guess, now seven contracts with utility companies across the U.S. And there's others that have signed that you guys have seen. And so the utility industry is getting into trying to build these projects central station. But these projects today, um, outside of the ones in California, are still trophy projects, right? I mean, they're still very expensive power, and they haven't yet necessarily within their current paradigm justified how to take that into thousands and thousands of megawatts. Now, that's happening in California because the market reference price for natural gas is so high. Um, but the, the companies that have gotten those contracts have yet to build projects under the market reference price. So they've, they've uh, signed contracts for many CSP plants. They've you know, sign contracts as well for concentrating PV and regular PV plants. But those contracts all have five years to build those projects. So they have until 2011, 2012 to build them. And so there's going to be, there's going to have to be some projects actually installed first before you can really claim that uh, solar is being used as an, an integral part of uh, the resource planning of the utility. Uh, today, it, it's not clear that that's occurred yet, but we can foresee a future where that will. Uh, let's see. So, you know, one of the ways to think about this, and we can do this in the U.S. basis as well, is sort of, you know, the world needs about 400 terawatt hours of new energy each year um, to sort of meet demand growth and then plant retirements. There's about 20 gigawatts of wind added in 07, three plus of solar, two of geothermal biomass and other zero emission technologies. So we're not quite there, right? I mean, to create 400 terawatt hours of electricity, you probably need, you know, at like 35% capacity factor or something like that. You probably need something on the order of, you know, 200 plus gigawatts of, of new capacity of wind and solar and some of these other things. So, you know, zero emission technologies are not yet in a position to really meet these, not only globally, but also in the U.S. I mean, in the U.S., we need about 10% of this. So we we need about 40 terawatt hours per year to keep the lights on. Um, and, but the cost of traditional pro production is going up. So Progress Energy just announced $14 billion for a new 2,237 megawatt nuclear power plant, which is over $6,000 a kW. Wind turbine prices are up 2x. And so what's happening is, is that the expectations of the utilities are softening to solar a little bit in terms of, well, you know, once you include the storage costs and transmission costs, then solar might actually be more. Uh, more competitive, and new coal plants are over $4,000 a kW now. 